Hello, Miss Represent. How are you? I hope you're keeping safe in these mad times. Yeah, hi. I mean, I'm not too bad. Thank you for asking. I'm enjoying the sunshine. The weather's wicked at the moment. And uh, all this COVID-19 stuff, it's a bit surreal, but I'm good. I'm good. Wicked. So next year will be 20 years of your career in the jungle and drama bass scene. Still going strong. So who or what first got you into the music and scene in the first place? Well, I used to live in Gloucester and it was and still is heavily influenced by urban underground music, all yeah. these kind of flavours. So a big garage, drum and bass and jungle following and a large Jamaican community there, which yeah. I guess that heavily influences you regardless. Uh, but I come from Tewkesbury um, around those areas and there's... A teenager who used to take these stereos to the weir in Tewkesbury and sit down there and smoke and, you know, drink mm. alcohol. Like, we were all quite young at the time. Um, and that was, like, before I moved to Gloucester. Um, and we used to listen to a lot of hardcore, so Hicks, Fours and Styles, before going to the Sanctuary in Milton Keynes to raise. And I suppose at that point, that's where I wandered into the jungle rooms, where I was about 15 or 16. All on fake ID, you know, but I fell in love with the big smoky rooms, the big bass lines, and it was just nice. It was kind of nice to be a white girl in a predominantly black music scene and be totally accepted for that. And I loved it and still do, and I've got, got a lot of fun memories of that. So do you remember what the first ever record was that you bought to mix with? Yeah, I'll never forget it. It was from Chemical Records in Cheltenham, and they later had me on as a resident on rotation, and it was the Dillinger Cybertron album. Oh, yeah. And that was around about 2001. I mean, that's about 19 years ago. Um, and I only bought about two or three lots of records. I mean, I didn't have much money. I was like, on benefits, you know, £37.50 a week, like to the penny. Not well, much, I think it was 37 37 pound yeah it was 37 pound 50 and uh so along with my benefit money and what i was doing i was living on a flat of my own I'm trying to pay bills and everything i used to mix the album tracks into each other over and over because i only had you know about one album of that which had about five or six i think records on and then it, and then uh i had another couple of records that were like seven eight pound each I've got a big up Dillinger and the whole Valve label, the Valve sound system. I mean, I've had the honour of playing on the Valve sound system so many times. And, you know, the Valve remixes that are coming out at the moment and Dillinger's just been a massive inspiration to me. And it's been a fantastic and memorable part of my career, what playing on the Valve sound system and being part of the Bedlam Nights and things. So, yeah, yeah, Dillinger Cybertron album. Cool. So what were your first ever and your latest gigs? So the first ever club gig I played was for Motivation at Jojo's and Stroud's and Mickey Finn was headlining and I'll never forget that first time of playing to about three people as the rest of the crowd kind of came in through the door, that whole feeling of, you know, the room filling up and the sound system was just so on point compared to my setup in my flat. So I used to play in Gloucester quite a bit. Those were my first gigs and the Brunswick was around the corner from me. So I played there for some of my first ever few gigs as well. And the Brunswick's quite iconic in Gloucester for like live music. Mm. Um, so yeah, the Black Cat, the Windmill. I mean, Crackers Nightclub, that's a monumental, you know, pinpoint of the drum and bass scene and the nights that we used to hold there. Um, we used to host loads and loads of drum and bass events and get people down. I've got to big up the whole crew in Gloucester, you know, they know their music. Yeah. Um, they helped me out a lot. Um, they shaped a lot of the way that I DJ and, you know, my experiences and things. So I've got to shout Brian G, obviously hailing from Gloucester. There's a lot of legends that's come from Gloucester. You know, MC Dread, he's absolutely smashing it right now. Um, Donovan Smith, who I've admired for years and, you know, he gave me a lot of good advice back in the day. and you know, shaped the way that I look at things in the scene and collide to name a few people um, from Gloucester. But talking about latest gigs, um, well, the last gig I did was for Raver Tops in Manchester at the Valentine's Ball. I mean, it was rammed, absolutely rammed pack in there and it was so much fun. Yeah, buy the parking ticket, but we won't go into that. <laughs> but yeah, I got a big up Vicky, Pete and the team, you know, Mike Pickett, who set it all up. Um, brilliant residency that I got there with... Uh, Rover tots, I love love the whole setup. Um, so before that was PST in Birmingham, and that was Junglish One Come, and that was mental. I mean, Birmingham was going off. I hope you're going to go back to them this year, some point when this is all over. And then once this is all over, I've got to go to Spain, Germany, and Portugal. 
Um, let's hope they all get rearranged. They should be. They should be being in contact with the promoters. But I've had quite a busy schedule this year. What with Norwich, Cornwall, Corby, uh, Bristol, Snow Market. And I'm really looking forward to getting back down Bristol again. Um, locally, Kettering as well and uh, Corby. So, and Stevenage, a little bit further down the road. That's just to name a few. But I'm a bit gutted, um, obviously, about this year. But we need to protect the old and vulnerable right now. So, it's all understandable. That's amazing. So... How does playing out make you feel? Do you still get the excitement from it all? Of course. I mean, it's the best thing in the world. I love it. It's so much fun watching people have a good time to the music that you're playing, that you're selecting, and the music that you're making as well. It's just an honour and a pure, pure joy. Love it. Yeah, so, so you played all over the world, from Chicago and Nevada and the USA, all over Europe, in Asia, headlined massive events around the world like Cross Club, Skibbity, High Rollers, Innovation, Random Concept, uh, as you said, the Valve system, um, even hosted your own events, Aftershock. If you absolutely had to choose one, which was or is the best? Oh, definitely either the Valve Bedlam Nights at Swindon at the Brunel Rooms. I mean, playing on that system, the Valve system is something else. Um, or the biggest event that I headlined at, at La Palma Music Festival. I mean, that was insane. I couldn't even see the back of the crowd. It was just mental. So two, yeah, two massive events with massive big booming sound systems and it's just the sound systems i think i'm just really into my audio and things sounding big and bad and heavy <laughs> <laughs> okay so which was the worst and why okay so i played a gig before tc in oakham um for my mate paul and i was feeling awful i was really sick and I struggled to drive home, it was that bad. And I think I had the norovirus at the time and it wasn't the gig itself, I just remember running from the decks and being sick, I was just not well. And that, that was one of the worst gigs, just purely for the fact I was so ill. So, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't a good one. So at your own events, with all the performers you've booked, um, who were your favourites? Um, favourite out of all the performers Fantasy obviously blokes are legends and running nights with him was just fun and memorable um, Pascal I think as well he's genuinely a lovely guy and he's still super helpful he obviously runs like the distribution for players um, he runs the distribution for my label um, and loads of others with high EQ uh, at the company but he's such a nice guy so I just remember like nice people remember nice experiences really I've got fond memories of running events with people who have made the night fun and memorable so is there any stories about any of them you can tell us you think that probably rather you didn't you don't have to name names in fact don't name names you might get the show in trouble <laughs> Well, yeah, not any of the names that I just mentioned, but it was an MC. Um, he's not really kind of about much anymore, um, but he collared me in the rain outside a club in Cheltenham when I was flying outside. So I used to fly events, you know, sell tickets for coaches, everything. I used to have to work hard to do all that. But I think, again, I think I was a bit ill and I felt a bit rough. Um, and I think he just came out and he said, wow, you're supposed to be a female DJ, you should be you know looking better than that and then just i'll just remember i just remember him saying it and i don't think those words will um ever leave me it kind of haunted me a bit yeah well i wonder why he's not around anymore um so as well as being a massive dj worldwide you've also had amazing success as a producer with music on viper recordings formation records bass legion and of course slice note recordings uh, what came first, DJing or producing, and which do you prefer? So DJing was what I first initially got hooked on and yeah. what I really loved, first of all, playing music. And I think after about two years, I was living at Brunswick Square in Gloucester, and around the corner uh, was the was a college. It was Gloucester College, mm. and there they did a national diploma in music technology. So I got on the course, and I was doing that course, and then I learned to how to produce a little bit in Cubase. I'm still on Cubase yeah. now. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Wicked. Um, so yeah, do I prefer DJing or producing? I like both. I like producing because it kind of like showcases sounds that I want to hear and what I like. But I also like DJing as well because it kind of taking that sound out of the studio and playing it to a live crowd. So yeah can't really say which one I prefer because both kind of go hand in hand to me at the moment but if I had to pick one I think it would be DJ and I just thoroughly love the live crowd 
you know the club experience the interaction with people you know being in that you know environment that's definitely me so i mean you've worked with some wicked artists on tracks to like cutting ranks on control or when you remix dj rap uh, dj rap spiritual aura do you prefer to write music on your own or with other people oh yeah first up big up cutty ranks i mean i was on the phone to him yesterday actually i've got so much love for that guy he's inspirational and i just feel blessed to be working with him and you know he's in jamaica right now you know and a lot of them are on curfew at the moment and it's a difficult time for everyone so my heart goes out to everyone over in jamaica as well right now and spain actually because spain are having it pretty tough too um yeah spiritual aura with rap again rap such an inspirational artist um again being able to work with her and remix you know some iconic tracks i just feel honored you know the universe seems to have a good place for me sometimes you know i always seem to get connected with like be- beautiful brilliant like amazing people and that's just a blessing um so do i prefer to write music on my own or with other people um I like both. Solo projects are fun. Um, I kind of like have my middle finger up sometimes when I'm doing a solo project because it's like, yeah, this is what I can do and I don't need to do it with anybody else and it's my thing. Um, But then, you know, doing collabs are good as well because I can learn off people. So, you know, I'm always kind of thinking about what the next step can be and what I can do. But like collaborations, I've learned so much of people that I've collabed with. So again, I'm completely, you know, grateful to all the people that have worked with me um, in the past because I have learned so much um, through that process. And of course, that's helped me move forward in my own career to do other things. So, yeah. So which of your own tracks are you most proud of? I think the, the three main tracks that went on the Need for Speed EA Games soundtrack, Most Wanted, and that was in 2012. And I think the reason why like, I'm so proud of that is first of all, like millions of copies of that got sold. But the other thing is that the music went alongside, you know, other huge artists such as like The Prodigy. And I've, I've got like Prodigy albums from when I was a kid and growing up and like I've always been like so in awe of these people and then to have my name you know it's as Silent Code um, alongside those people Dizzy Rascal, DJ Fresh, Dead Mouth, Rudimental, I mean Neuro and Skrillex and The Who, Calvin Harris I mean I could go on these people are massive legends and so to have my name up against them that's probably what i was so proud of it was like wow i've done this and again i'll be eternally grateful eternally grateful to all the people that have picked out and placed like our music on there so thank you <laughs> thank you um, like having hundreds of thousands of sales i still get messages from people who play it and love the music and that was just like yeah Thank you. Well, they are good tracks. Approaching the Grand Central Silent Coast Station. Please step away from the edge of the platform. Thank you. Um, around 13 years ago, you played one of my tracks, Nightmare, in your top five tracks of the month charts. Um, seeing someone I respect playing my own tracks has always blown my mind, whether it's at an event, on the radio, or just online, on the page, or whatever. Uh, who have you heard play your own tracks that made you think, wow, in your head? Well, first off, thank you for sending me the music. I mean, 13 years ago and you still remember that moment. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, So, you know, I'm eternally grateful for for people like you sending me music to play. I mean, it keeps DJs in a job. Um, But uh, yeah, I think I wowed when Jaguar Skills played one of our tunes at a gig before The Prodigy came on and somebody sent me a video of it. And at first I was like, oh, right, that's that's our, oh, and I was like, oh, that's our track. And I was like, whoa that's a big crowd what's that and it was like a the prodigy um stage was all set up and i was like wow that's one of our tunes and seeing the crowd going off um to one of our tracks that we've done that jag skills was playing at an event like that that was yeah that was a wow moment but i think every time bbc radio one you know gives us airplay so thanks to Matrix and Futurebound for that and of course Friction and Mr Jam but sometimes even just an internet radio show you know with someone who's not massively known 
but when they play your track and do a wicked double drop or a wicked mix on it you know that wows me that makes me smile so a lot of love to everyone who buys and plays my music you know i've got respect for you so we're going to be hearing more music from you in 2020 and beyond of course the cutty rags tune is coming out on his album um, I think I'm the only producer other than his producer with a track going out on his album so I'm like completely blessed for that um, yeah I'm doing a little thing with Brian Brainstorm and UK Apache so that's in the works at the moment so I'm hoping to get that tied up this year yeah um, I'm doing a Lady Desire remix um, which is coming along long nicely um, the vocals say all I need is me myself and I and I don't know it just resonates with me those those kind of vocals because I've always kind of worked on my own a lot recently and I've always stood on my own two feet and I've always got back up when I've been battled down and I just kind of like what the what the vocals mean to me um so yeah oh and I've got a track coming out with Navigator on Formation Records so shouts to DJ SS um for that because DJ SS has done like a lot of work um with me recently obviously out on formation getting my tracks released out on there and it's been a good outlet and obviously we got to remix the dj ss black and that was a huge remix for us so you know thanks to ss each and every time guys a legend but the track with navigator is called calling all junglists um it's going to be coming up may june time and it says Calling all junglists, put on your raving shoes. <laughs> Wicked, perfect timing, hopefully. So, fingers crossed it's going to drop when we can all get back out of our cages. So, yeah, look out for that on Formation Records. And also, there's a mix going out. And it's a massive, massive German... I think it's based in Dusseldorf in Germany. And it's called Studio Sounds Radio. And they've got about 45,000 people on Twitter. If you go and check them, at Studio Sounds... I'm doing a mix set with Token Black, MC Token Black. Check him out as well. He's from Birmingham. He's absolutely wicked. Like, absolutely sick up and coming MC. Um, yeah, so a mix coming out with Studio Sounds uh, Radio. Uh, and with Token Black, yeah. Wicked, I'll look forward to it. So, I mean, his success has been recognised in loads of ways from headlining events to music being licensed in big games to winning awards. Uh, playing sets on radio so what's more rewarding to you winning an award is like recognition and it's voted for and it's like it's like a popularity contest Mm. Um, but people have physically voted for you to like be you know the best artist or the best vocalist so that means a lot you can't take that away and once you've got that award nobody can take it away from you that kind of means something it's a physical thing um so that's amazing but Seeing a track played by a favourite DJ is, you know, that's what we all work for. You know, you see somebody playing your music, you think, yeah, they obviously appreciate and love your music, which is a nice feeling. So, I don't know what's, I don't know which one to pick. That's a really tough question, but both are, both are amazing things to have as an artist. Finally, I see you as a brilliant DJ and producer, full stop. But others I know see you as a brilliant female DJ and producer. Um, How has your experience been as a female in what is a predominantly male scene? I prefer like being called a good DJ and producer to being called a good female DJ and producer because you don't really say to men, yeah, he's a wicked male producer, is he? Or, yeah, he's a wicked male MC. You know, that just doesn't happen. That's just not what's set. So... Over 20 years, like I've been in this scene, I've gone from being happy to use it to my advantage at some times, you know, best female DJ award or, you know, you do put that in your bio and it does work. But then I go through stages of disliking certain aspects because I don't want to be seen as a good female artist. I want to be up there against the boys. Um, Now I'm a lot more chilled out about things. You know, like I'm a bit older. Most people are educated and informed and smart. People are smart. So you don't need to underestimate people too much, you know? And if music makes you feel good and it makes them feel good, that's what we should be concentrating on. If you close your eyes, you know, and think, who's made this track? Who's made this piece of music? You don't think, oh, it's a man or a woman. You don't necessarily care. You just care that it's good. And I think that's what we just need to concentrate on. 
you know, we just need to be happy about the whole music thing and the whole scene, you know, working together and being as one and enjoying the music and enjoying the raves and enjoying the culture. Well, as I said, I don't see sex, race or anything else when it comes to music. Um, and I just think you're a brilliant artist, no matter what sex you are, really. And I hope it all continues and grows. That said, what is misrepresent up to now, or at least when things go back to normal? Uh, what am I up to now? What am I up to now? I'm trying to stay sane with two young children under five in the house that are needing a lot of attention and stimulation. Um, so, yeah, it can drive you crazy sometimes. They are hard, hard work. I mean, we go out for walks and we're blessed with a big green space behind the house and they love the woods. Um, but, you know, kids just need your time and attention so much and obviously making music and doing stuff is very time consuming as well so balancing that is really difficult as a mum um, but this week I've rearranged my studio I've started doing my top tens again which I haven't been doing and obviously because they're really popular mm. and they were a staple you know yeah. people used to love those when I did it but I've just never really had the deck set up right so I've wiggled it all around just bought a new studio card as well as the Moto studio card it was doing my head in it was cutting out and it just made me not want to do any music but you know everything costs money and and, mm. and things are expensive i mean even artists at the top with like 50 60 100 000 followers you know they still got bills to pay you know things cost money yeah things cost money to run um you know you once you paid your mortgage or you paid your bills you've even got to buy studio equipment and equipment is expensive and sometimes we don't have immediate cash flow to go out and buy kit, laptops and sound cards. So right now I'm working hard and everything in my studio is working. So I'm making a few tunes, I'm doing a few mixes and I'm just smiling. I've got a lot to be grateful for. Um, yeah, so a few projects in the pipeline and uh, I'm looking forward to going out and getting back on the DJ circuit. So last thing before I let it go, on this show we play music from 1990 to 2020 in order and I'll ask anyone that comes on to choose one song they want me to play from them three decades. So three decades of music, which song do you want me to play and why? So I'm going to pick a track from, I think it's 2004 and it was Joe R-Type and it was the Shogun audio remix. So yeah, I'm going to pick that one. Good choice. Well, I'm going to play that for you now. Thanks again for coming on the show, Mr. Represent. It's been an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you for having me. And, you know, I really appreciate having you on. And big up with the show and big up with everything that you're doing. Well, I hope to meet you again soon. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And, uh, yeah. Cheers. Bye bye.